Hey guys, it's Arun. Hope you found Biostats made easy, useful, and enjoyable in relation to sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, and prevalence. Let's get straight to the next part. So then the question comes up as to what is prevalence, all right? So prevalence is going to be who actually has the disease. So here that was at 80 plus 20, right? The people that actually have the disease, the reality, the positive, the people that actually positively in reality have the disease. Your prevalence is your true positive, false, false negative. All right, so that's the people that actually have the disease divided by everything, everybody in the population. So again, your true positive plus false negative who actually have the disease and your false positive plus true negative who don't have the disease. So you put everybody in the denominator and therefore, your 20 plus 80, the people that actually have the disease, 100 divided by everybody, 20 plus 80, 100, and then another 100 here, 90 plus 10, is 200, so your prevalence is 0 0.5. So now, we said our prevalence is 0 0.5. That was that 100 over 200 equation that we just did, all right? But how does prevalence relate to your positive predictive value and your negative predictive value? Okay, so that's what let's find that out because that will definitely be asked. All right, so let's say that you, your prevalence was the amount of people that actually had uh, the disease, right? Your numerator, so let's say your prevalence increases. So if your prevalence increases, what does it do to your positive predictive value? And if your prevalence decreases, what does it do to your negative predictive value? Well, how do you increase your prevalence? We just talked about it. Prevalence was true positive plus false negative. It's this column here. So let's say your prevalence goes up by plus 10 and plus 10 here. All right. So then your prevalence. So as it relates to positive predictive value, when we found out the positive predictive value here, it was 20 uh, divided by 30, which was 0.66. But let's say that you add 10 here, right? So now that you've added 10, because you're increasing your prevalence, you're adding 10, what does this become? Well, then this becomes, instead of 20 over 30, this now all of a sudden becomes 30 over 40, which gives you 0 0.75. So as your prevalence increases, your positive predictive value also increases. Okay? But what happens when your prevalence decreases? Quick summary. As we increased prevalence, what happened to our positive predictive value? It went up. Okay? But what if we decrease prevalence? What will happen then? Well, how do you decrease prevalence? That means your prevalence is all of your true, all of the reality, all the people that actually have it, right? So let's say last time we did plus 10, plus 10. Let's say this time we do minus 10 and minus 10, all right? So what happens to your negative predictive value, for example? For example, if you increase prevalence, you get an increase in positive predictive value. What happens if you decrease prevalence? What happens to your negative predictive value? Well, you already know that a negative predictive value is 90, right? Your true negative always goes on top. 90 divided by 90 plus 80, which was 170. So 90 over 170 was 0 0.53, right? But what happens if you subtract 10, right? So then your true negative remains the same. So it's still 90, but now it's 90 over minus 10, which becomes, this becomes 70. So it's 90 over 160. And obviously that's, I think that's about 0.56, all right? So that's 0.56. So if you decrease your prevalence, you actually increase your negative predictive value. Based off this, you know any combination of what they're gonna ask you in regards to prevalence and positive predictive value, or a decrease in prevalence and negative predictive value. All right, so that gives you the summary of what we discussed in regards to uh, in regards to sensitivity, your specificity, your positive predictive value, your negative predictive value, your prevalence, your true positive, your false positive, which also you can have your what error, you can have your why, it's on the top, it's above, so type one error, or your alpha error, or down here, which is your, you know, you can go ahead and call it your type two error, or beta error, and we'll talk about that more in another video, and then there's your true negative, and that is your summary. So that's your summary. So next time when you hear words like sensitivity or specificity, again, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, whatever, 
they need to make sense to you. They need to have a meaning to you. So when you think sensitivity next time, you know exactly where it goes on your two by two. When you think of specificity, you know exactly where it goes as far as calculating the people that actually don't have it. And when you think of positive predictive value, it needs to mean something to you. You need to know, hey, positive predictive value, I'm trying to see how accurate my test is when it tests positive or negative predictive value, how accurate my test is when it tests negative. These words have to mean something to you rather than just simply words. So that's what we have for you guys. Uh, if you want personalized tutoring, hit us up uh, where you can go over these concepts of actual questions and um, you know, be sure to like and subscribe and, and comment on the sections. Uh, if you have any questions at all, we're here to help you in every way and uh, we'll put the promo code up for you. Thank you so much for watching our content. Also, if you want to learn more about our courses and our tutoring, be sure to take advantage of our promo code below and we can't wait to help you pass your test.